Annie Sandra here from Create in Spain and today I'm going to show you a stamp that I'm making. This is my negative, it's printed on tracing paper and this one is called Sitting Duck. I think he's quite cute and I'm going to make it quite quickly by putting a piece of cellophane over that, getting some tape and just sticking that down. It pays to stick things down just so that nothing moves. It provides a nice firm surface. I have a stamp making frame and I'm going to put that on here. The next thing is to get my stamp making gel. And just fill up the frame with the gel. Now it may be tempting to try and save some of the gel. In most cases you'll find that's a false economy because you'll end up with a dip in your stamp and then your stamp won't stamp properly and you'll end up remaking it. Check to see if you have any bubbles in the gel. Bubbles on the top aren't too bad, but you really don't want any on the bottom, especially over any of the design itself. Just prick it there. Now in summertime, the gel is much, much easier to use. So it flows nicely in the winter. It tends to be a bit more slow flowing, but it's a self leveling gel. And if you just give it a minute or so, it'll do what it has to do. There we go, that should do. Another piece of cellophane over the top, and I almost fold it to the centre and just allow it to drop to the sides. Now, when you put the glass top on, you can tell if you have enough gel, because if you do, that sometimes happens. I've got a bit too much, but I'd rather have a bit too much than too little. I really would. So I've got my lamp ready and I've got my timers ready. So this is going to go into my lamp. 40 seconds on one side and then it's going to have a 1 minute 30 on the other side. That's because it has very, very fine lines. Okay, 2, 1, 0. That's one timer done. You don't have to have two timers, I've got two because it's just easier. I set them both up before I start and then I know what I'm doing. Right, one minute thirty for this one. Once they come out of the lamp, I take them into the bathroom and I wash them out with washing up liquid and a nail brush. Once that's done, they go in a small water bath and they go back under the lamp for about six minutes and then just wash them off again and they're ready to use. For anyone wondering, I do not have the original lamp bulbs in there. I swap them out for LED UV lights and that is a great improvement. There we go. That can go back in my drawer. And this can come out. And this is going to be stuck to my glass because of the excess gel. Which is going to be a bit fun. I have to get a palette knife or something in there to split it open. Oh, that went right through my ear, that did. Okay, eventually gravity got the better of it. Possibly congested, I don't know if you can see the design in there, but it's there. And if I peel off the side, which has got the tape, and I peel it off, you can see the duck being revealed. I fold that back over on itself, that can go straight in the bin, and now I need to wash this out. My stamp has been washed out, 
and it's just going to go in this shallow water bath into the lamp for, as I said, about six minutes. It isn't crucial, the stamp is made, you can always recure it at a later time if you want to. But since my lamp has got a two minute timer, I just do that three times and then as far as I'm concerned, that's it, it's done. The frame that I made is simply wiped off, ready to use again. It will remain slightly sticky, but that's a good thing because it helps to grip onto the cellophane. And so all I need to do is put it back in my little pouch with the rest of them. As you can see, I have quite a collection of these things. My negative is untouched. It's perfectly clean, so I can store this for future use if I want to. This is printed on tracing paper, normal cheap tracing paper with a laser printer. For anyone who wants to consider making their own polymer stamps, I will leave a link in the information box below or on screen in a card at the end of the video to other videos that show you exactly what materials you need to make the stamps. I've got the lamp away now because that's finished with. It's had six minutes. I can remove the cellophane backing. Let me just find a loose piece. There we go. If you really wanted to, you could probably reuse it, but if it's bent or creased, don't because your stamp will suffer as a result of that. And then all you need to do is cut off any excess that you want to get rid of. I don't take too much care in cutting around my stamps, just give them a little bit of a border and just round off the edges a little bit. There we go, that'll do. This is almost dried in the heat of the room now. So that goes on to a stamping block. And I test out, this is just a scrap of paper. I usually use my Memento black ink for a test. There we go, perfect stamp. I don't know if you can actually see that very well, but it's immaculate. It's got very fine lines. On the Shortcut Slot software, those lines are actually just point, well, one point something thick. I don't know, it's the thinnest, almost the thinnest that the Shortcut Slot goes to. And so it's no thicker than a, a pen line. So that works perfectly as soon as it's actually made. For storage, I use pieces of document wallet. And these days I try and put a second piece over the top simply so you can get it out of the container easily. I use a CD storage wallet. I buy these in packets of 50 when I can get them. And then I will put the name of the stamp on there. So this one happens to be Sitting Duck. The reason I do that is because I automatically put my stamp designs through my Shortcuts Lot software and I store it in the program. That way, when I want to do a die cut of it, I've got the file and if I've got it labelled there, I know exactly where to find it. I can find the die cut, no problem. So, and then put that in there, like so. Now, because my printer needs warming up when I use it, it's a laser printer, but if I print the very first item, it just doesn't print solidly enough. So I tend to print on a normal piece of paper a couple of times first, let the printer really warm up, and then print onto my tracing paper. So I then put one of my laser printed designs in the front, I know exactly what my stamp is, it's perfectly safe in there and ready to use. So that's it, I will link up above some videos that you can watch if you're interested in the stamp making. Other than that, thanks for watching, take care now.